This show was previously recorded. It's What's Up with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I got my special, special guest co-host, Tiffany Holmes, in the building. What's going on, Tiffany? How hello, are you? Hello. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. That's pro- no problem. Let's start the show with some positivity as we do every show. Giving someone the credit they deserve for being great, for being positive in a segment called The Hot Spotlight. Today, The Hot Spotlight goes... Uh, for me, goes to NCCU's uh, nursing professor, Roger Collins. So uh, Professor Collins uh, first stepped on the, the campus of NCCU in 1983 at the age of 26. Um, and he recently was interviewed by ABC 11, where he announced that he will be retiring after a 40 year career on campus where he has held various positions at 69, uh, excuse me, 67 years old. Uh, he describes himself as a proud old school nurse. After 40 years here, he, uh, the UNC Chapel Hill graduate told ABC 11 he feels more like an NCC Eagle more than a Tar Heel. Uh, he has uh, estimates that he has taught over 500,000 nurses. His retirement isn't growing uh, over well with his current students, but uh, Mr. Collins, Professor Collins, says that uh, his former students have even retired before him, but his day is coming soon. Uh, he is leaving a, a lasting legacy of of a great things in uh, standing on his shoulders for the people who were here before him and he plans to retire on um, after this semester on December 31st and he says for six months he's going to go fishing and golf uh, and after that he plans to come back to NCCU to be a part-time instructor uh, so this, this major props to uh, Professor Collins and you know retirement is very well um, well deserved after a 40 year career now that's my hot spotlight who gets the hot spotlight from you Tiffany I'm definitely gonna make my person a little more personal I'm gonna have to give my spotlight to my professor okay a mentor of mine Dr. Ariel Ellis wow okay um, she is a mass communications professor here I concentrate in public relations and she completely changed um, just my outlook on PR, my professional development. Um, she's always kept it real with me, and she makes sure that students have opportunities to, you know, really just expand. Gotcha. Um, she even has an event today. Oh, wow. Yes. A little Miss Kelly O'Connor, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, I just came back from, from there uh, before the show uh, because I was rushing to the studio today. I'm glad <laughs> I barely made it, but I am here. Thank you so much for the hot spotlight. Up next, we got you covered with the hot report. Uh, and, oh, excuse me, with the hot headlines. Uh, so marijuana use uh, says that uh, it could cause heart attacks and it could cause heart failure. So NCCU students, be be aware of that. It's what's up, Washington Michael. We'll be back. That was ICU, uh, Coco Jones, who was a Grammy nominated. We're going to talk about that later in the show. It's time for uh, these hot headlines uh, here on What's Hot. Here we go. The news. Here we go. All right. Don't go there. Well, it is what's hot so, with Shemaika, so we go there all the time. Okay. These are the stories heating up in the news. Someone is not doing their job correctly because this is this is blasphemous. I'm sorry. This is Hot Headlines. Yeah. Allegedly. Okay. On what's hot. A study shows that marijuana use is, is, raise, is raising heart, uh, heart attacks and uh, heart failure. In strokes. Uh, so a pair of studies uh, have found that older adults who use marijuana, God bless you, it's okay. <laughs> Tiffany's uh, sneezing in here. It's good. Uh, so uh, a pair of studies, like I said, uh, found that older adults who use marijuana uh, have more risk of heart uh, attacks and strokes when hospitalized uh, than non users and are more likely to develop heart failure if they are daily users so nccu students you know i i am you know well, you were all college students I, I that's not my cup of tea uh tiffany had to step away because she gotta go uh handle some business but i'm just here but no uh 
I think that, you know, we need to, I think, I think marijuana is very un, un, unnecessary unless you use it for medical reasons. That's, that's my, that's my take on that. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so in other news, cantaloupe, uh, cantaloupe is, uh, that is sold in multiple U.S., were recalled due to salmonella risk. So Sophia Produce LLC, which is uh, which operates under the name True F- uh, Fresh, is recalling all sizes of fresh cantaloupe due to possible salmonella con- contamination. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced last Thursday the company, which operates out of Arizona, said that cantaloupes were disputed, uh, d- disputed, yeah, directly to Arizona, California, Maryland, New Jersey, Tennessee, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, Texas, uh, and Florida, as well as Canada. So North Carolina, we're actually pretty good, but I'm trying to figure out why the calf didn't have cantaloupe. We digress. Um, and uh, and in uh, in the last uh, hot report, um, all um tree as some Christmas tree farms close due uh, to lack of supply. So the uh, holidays are fast approaching, and as people prepare to pick out the perfect pine of uh, decorate of decor for Christmas trees, you see, <laughs> to uh, decor for Christmas, uh, some growers are warning to uh, warning the holiday sample uh, could be in the short supply. Some Christmas tree farms that have been uh, holiday, uh, holiday fixtures for decades say they won't be open this season. This is why cats should get um, plastic trees. Save you some money. But people like that smell of uh, of um, the pine in their house during the holiday season. You could get some air freshener that uh, smells like pine. But I digress. Um, the, and that was the hot report. Uh, oh, bro, uh, she's back. Uh, well, uh, Tiffany, what we got coming up in the hot report? Oh, what we got coming up in the hot report, Tiffany? <laughs> Yo, what we got coming up in the hot report? Yeah, just read the, what's the first headline on the paper. <laughs> So for the hot report, we have the 2024 Grammy nominations yeah. that are out. Um, the full list of nominations for the 67th annual Grammy awards are out, with SZA leading the nominees. Yeah, so, um, with nine nominations. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about that, um, all that, and some more. Is what's up with Shamai Cook? We shall be back. It's what's up with Shamai Cook. I'm Shamai Cook. Uh, I got my special guest co-host uh, Tiffany Holmes. What's going on, Tiffany? You all right? You had a little, uh, you had a little, uh, uh, a little uh, sneeze attack. I'm happy to be back. You know, it's cold outside. It is I'm cold outside. sniffling, sniffling, and got a little tickle in the throat. But <laughs> but we're here and we're safe. Um, enough of that. It's time to get into the hot report. Here we go. Let's go. I get paid to talk about you, not talk to you. Pop culture to news at NCCU. This is the hot report. <laughs> if I want to talk about you, if I feel like you you're not doing your job, I'm gonna talk about it, whether you like it or not. On what's hot? <clears throat> All right, what we, what we got in the hot report, Tiffany? The full list of nominations for the 67th annual Grammy Awards are out, with SZA leading the nominees with nine Grammy nominations. Mm. Um, other key nominees include Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, Boy Genius, Miley Cyrus, John Baptiste, Victoria Monet, and Billie Eilish, with of whom compete against SZA for Record of the Year. Listen, these Grammy nominations are out of this world. I, I, album of the year. What was the album of the year? What's the category for album? Who's, who's nominated for album so of the year? So for album of the year, we have Boy Genius, uh-huh. um, Janelle Monet, John Pep- Baptiste, yep. Lana Del Rey, Miley Cyrus, Olivia Rodrigo, SZA, and Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift might win this because it's Taylor Swift, but I think SZA's SOS album, that, that, that album, it's... Especially seeing the the album come to life in concert, SZA definitely deserves this. But you know the Grammys are the Grammys. They love mm-hmm. uh, they love them some Taylor Swift. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. I think it's gonna be between Taylor Swift 
and um, SZA. But I wouldn't be surprised if um, John Patiz get it, gets it back to back because he won Absolutely. album of the year last year. But you know, it is what it is. All right, record of the year. I like this category: Kill Bill, SZA. I think Billie Eilish is nominated. We got John Batiste, uh, Miley Cyrus, Flowers. That's a good record. That's a big record. That's a good record. And then you know, especially Anti Hero, Taylor Swift. Uh, and we just played this record earlier on my mama, Victoria. Uh, Bad tits. I think yeah. Bonnet, Bonnet, I, I have to be honest with you. When it comes to record of the year, mm-hmm. I already know that Taylor Swift is going to win yeah. um, in that category just because of how large her tour was. Yeah. I mean, she had an amazing tour. Uh, you, you know, I feel like it might... <sighs> I think it might go to SZA. I, I don't know. SZA is gonna definitely want, gonna win some yeah, Grammy. She's coming home with something. She's gonna be. I think I, I'm gonna say maybe three or two. <clears throat> I want her to win album of the year. That's yeah. the category I want her to win because that album of the year category has not been any color lately. It's been it's been Harry Styles. I think he won last year. Yeah. Which Beyonce should have won last year, but that's another story for another day. But Harry's House was a good album. I, I'm not yeah. gonna lie, that was a good album. But. Uh, I think the album of the year category needs to be a little diversified. So you never know. Maybe SZA might win. You know, maybe the Grammys might feel, you know, it's, it's the Grammys. Now, best new artist. I like this category. Did we have that? On, did I put that in your paper? Yeah, I oh, see it here. Best new, best new artist. To me, it's between Coco Jones and Nice Spice. And in, in our production mm. meeting yesterday, you you didn't think Coco Jones deserved it. I, explain explain why. I think I think it's, it's, it's between those two because those two has been putting in the work, yeah. um, and, and being especially I Spice might do it because she went verse she went um, mainstream doing that record with Taylor Swift Karma. So that's probably why she might win because she went to not just uh, being in hip hop and R and B, but she went to being in pop also. So that's being versatile. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> although we love Coco Jones, yes. right? Um, when it comes to the Grammys, we have to understand that the artist in this category, it, you can't be biased. Even though we love Coco Jones, it's like when it comes to national success and super superstardom, she hasn't really gotten there yet. Okay. Um, so you say Ice Spice is a bigger star. <clears throat> I say Ice Spice is a bigger star, but I'm not ruling out the other uh, nominees. Okay. Um, okay. But this is like, nah, this is worldwide success. Um, so we love Coco, but let's not be biased. Yeah. Best R&B performance. I like this one. Uh, Summer Too Hot, I See You, Kill Bill, mm. uh, How How Does It Make You Feel, mm. What Is This, Back to Love. I think it's going to be easy. Uh, we'll see. Ooh. I love the visuals for Scissors Kill Bill. The yes. whole concept oh of the my album. God. No, now you have to see it live. I went to the concert in oh, Atlanta. Oh wow! Yes, when I tell you that visual mm-hmm. is something that production of yeah. that tour. Oh, spot on. All right, we got other stuff to talk about. What <laughs> the Grammys? But what else is in the hot report? Um, so we gonna get into a spicy topic. Okay. Kiki Palmer granted custody of son and temporary restraining order against Darius Dalton, yeah. her child's father. Yeah, you know K- Kiki Palmer. Um, <clears throat> you know I'm sending healing, healing energy to her. No one deserves um, <clears throat> to be allegedly. Well, well, it's not allegedly, but I have to say allegedly because there's actual proof of the of Darius actually um you know putting uh his hands on her uh of that's why uh the that's when the restraining order came out uh those pictures surfaced through tmz in the shade room but you know it's it's kind of sad because no no black woman should you know go through that or woman at all to do, you know women men should not you know hit on women this domestic violence is really serious and um, you know, sending Hill and energy to Kiki Palmer and, and her son as well. Absolutely. Um, I find it so ironic that we just passed Domestic Violence Month, right? Yeah. Um, and when situations like this happen where we don't know for sure all of the um, pieces to the puzzle, I really hope that individuals take situations like this yeah. as like a just a wake-up call yeah. because when it comes to domestic violence it never starts with the hitting absolutely um there are se- there are several stages to it um and so it can start off with you know an insult right 
and yeah. and then it increases. So I hope that like all the ladies out there just make sure just because you're not being hit on yeah. does not mean that you're not being abused. It, absolutely. Verbal abuse is probably uh, more violent than physical abuse because mental abuse is um, is important. Is, is, is worse to me. But I think we have audio because Kiki Palmer's mom spoke about this, uh, about Darius, and uh, I think we have audio for that right here. Look, I've never done anything like this. I've been in this business for 22 years. I've seen a lot of stuff, but this is, I can't help myself. For Sharonis Jackson to post on his Twitter the ridiculous stuff that he's posted when he knew his brother was abusive. I went to Sharonis over a year ago and told him that his brother was abusive to my daughter, and he said, uh, well, I used to be like that too. What? So now he's posting on Twitter like he's this uh, special guy. We, we know he's the biggest boy in Hollywood. He's disrespectful to women, just like his little brother. He taught his brother how to be abusive. So he don't get to act like he's this special guy. No, you're a boy and you're a part of the problem. You know, you know, first of all, once your mother know, once the mama says something, that's how you know it's serious. Uh, so, you know, in all seriousness, this is, this is, this is, it's not, it's not up to the court of, uh, of opinion. It's up to the court of law mm. at this point. Cause since it's, since it's legal, the documents and the restraining order, all we have to do is just, just wait for the court of opinion. I mean, the court of law. So absolutely. I found it very interesting. A couple of things that happened, um, the first thing that was interesting was what uh, Darius did in retaliation yeah. of that, um, releasing uh, audio of Kiki Palmer's mother threatening him allegedly. Allegedly. All yeah. allegedly. Mm -hmm. um, I found that so interesting yeah. that, it was a, that it was some type of retaliation and rebuttal. Um, and I find that when people are dead wrong exactly. they find ways to deflect and i just thought that that was very eye-opening and it yeah. was interesting the other thing that i thought was interesting was that kiki palmer's mother mentioned that this had been going on for a year yeah at least and so i think that we have to go into some accountability because you knew that this was going on for a year and you didn't call the police yep that's interesting. That that is interesting, and also I feel like some guys think that they they are owed something because this is what happens when you date when you're a celebrity. You know, I this is this is people's live. You date who you want to date, but when you're a celebrity, you know when you date somebody who are, is not on your level, there's going to be some sense of jealousy and naiveness. So, uh, especially with that Usher situation happened, and he went on Twitter or excuse me X or whatever it's called nowadays. <laughs> and went on that rant talk about oh, how she was dressing and it's, yeah. it seems like he's very controlling and like like her mom was saying it's a pattern and this is this is dangerous but you know like I said healing energy to Kiki Palmer all right what else have we got in the hot report um so also we're gonna get into something else a little spicy Roy Harvey and Damson Idris ah. release a joint statement announcing the end of their relationship now personally uh -huh. I really don't think that this is news uh-huh but we gotta do we gotta do well, we gotta it. talk about we gotta it. talk about it it's entertainment news <laughs> uh but you know lori harvey you know she does what she wants you know i feel like she she changes boyfriends like uh she changes her underwear I, but, uh, but, no. but 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 you know love is love you know it, does, it doesn't even matter so <clears throat> no you know i i'm gonna have to disagree and rebuttal that you know most people, their relationships don't last over a year. Yeah. And Kiki Palmer, ooh, ooh. that's my fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lori, Lori Harvey, Harvey and yes. Damson Idris, you know, they were together for two years. And a lot of y'all, no shade, you know, but y'all relationships don't last like five months. Oh, my God. No, five um, minutes. And Let you're moving on. Minutes. And yes. you're moving on. So I really feel like we're just in this woman's business. Yeah. Well, and then we're judging her. She's a celebrity. So she's, she's a celebrity. Yeah, so um, that's why we care. But I'm not I don't mad care. at her. You know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I miss, the I miss her and Mikey B. Joy. I ain't gonna lie. Well, I want to hear Steve Harvey's uh, situation about uh, Steve Harvey's uh, take on this, but I think he doesn't care. But uh, that was the hot report. Uh, up next, uh, at the up next, we got some more uh, show for you. It, it is what it is. It's what's hot 
with Shamai Cook. We shall be back right after this. You're listening to What's Hot on NCCU Audio Network. That was uh, Rich Baby Daddy, Drake, featuring uh, S- uh, Sexy Red and SZA here on What's Up, What's Your Micah? That's a good record, right, uh, Tiffany? Yeah, I like that song. It's a yeah, bop. It's a, it's a bop. It's a it's. It's definitely it's it's a, it definitely is a vibe. All right, it's time. Um, at the, oh wait, first of all, at the top of the hour, we got you covered uh, with the hot mix of the day. Um, and later in the show, I got my interview with uh, Chief Williams uh, here at NCCU, Damian Williams. Uh, it is what it is. Is what's hot? What's your mic up? You're listening to What's Hot on NCCU Audio. Network. It's What's Hot with Shamai Cook. I'm Shamai Cook, uh, and I have a special guest in the building today, the legendary Chief Damon Williams on the show, uh, NCC Chief of Police in Public Policy, Public Safety. Welcome to What's Hot. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Chief. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, first, first, first and foremost... How have you been? How has uh, I know we're post um, homecoming and all that jazz. <laughs> yeah. So how how have you been? Have you gotten any sleep? How about that? I got a little bit of rest, but it, you know the rest doesn't stop for what I do. So mm-hmm. uh, not as much rest as I need to. But the holidays are coming up, so I'll get plenty. Okay, okay. Let's get into what made you want to start. You know, getting into uh, public safety and wanting to be. You know, in. Uh, in, in in the police force. So not many people know this, but I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to be in the police force. Um, not full time, right? Yeah. I, I went to the uh, Knight Academy and I got my law enforcement certification. But before I was a police officer, I was an educator. Okay. I worked at a local high school in mm-hmm. Southern Pines. And I really enjoyed that uh, until they started changing the rules on how educators can operate. Uh, and, and then I, I decided, you know what, this is not going to be a, a, a field that I can prosper in because the resources weren't going to allow us to properly educate our young people. Okay. And so um, I looked, I started looking for a new career path, which my secondary career path was law enforcement. So I took a job with a small town um, neighboring the town that I was currently working in. Gotcha, gotcha. So you you have you are a part of a lot of committees when it mm-hmm. comes to not just in North Carolina but nationally mm-hmm. across all HBCUs. Uh, talk about your experience working with other schools, other institutions. And uh, how, how does that uh, make your job a little easier? So I've been very fortunate. Um, I've been a, chief, a police chief a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the average lifespan of a police chief is three to five years, where I've exceeded that by almost 10 plus more wow. years, okay. right? So I've been a, 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 a long-standing chief in North Carolina. And so uh, in 2022, I rose to the, um, the office of president of the North Carolina Chiefs of, chiefs of Police Association, yep. uh, which governs, um, in a way, all 500 um, municipalities, police chiefs. We okay. all work together as an association. So I served last year as the president of that organization. And then this year we went to the HBCU LEEA, which is the Law Enforcement Executive Conference for all HBCU police chiefs. And I was elected vice president by that group. Gotcha. So now I serve on a national level, um, uh, serving all of our HBCUs around the country. Uh, you know, Central NCCU is one of the safest schools in the UNC system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's because of you. Um, I think it's because of us. Because, because of all of, yeah. all of us, the staff that you put together. Talk about what goes into being the one of the safety, safest schools in the UNC system and a, actually being in Durham, which is not really safe as people think it is. Uh, talk about that. So I think safety revolves around relationships, right? Okay. It, I tell people like this, it's hard to hate somebody you have a relationship with. You know, it's hard for me to look at a student and my officers to look at students and say, I want to lock them up if we have relationships. I'm more keen to want to help them resolve the issues. It's hard for the students in turn to look at the officers and say, you know what, I hate him. It's hard to do that when you have a relationship with people and you know people by, by their name, right? So relationships make this place safe. Here's why. There, there have been many, many times that I'll get a call from one of my partners um, on this campus, like Dean Hartfield, for example, mm-hmm. or Kelsey Highsmith, or Heather Davis over in Student Student Leadership and Engagement, who will call me and say, hey, how, are you aware of the following? Because we have that partnership, they call and we trust each other, right? And I do vice versa to get students help. Uh-huh. There have also been times where students have picked up the phone and said, Chief, you need to come over this to this hall on the third floor. This is what's going on, period, right? Mm-hmm. And so because we have those relationships, we're able to intercede into things before they even happen. Gotcha. And so that's really benefited us here at Central with keeping and mitigating crime on campus. You like, you talk about relationships. You, you are, uh, I've I only been here for about a, uh, a year or so. 
and you are very personable when it comes to building relationships with students. Mm -hmm. Does that make your job easier? How does that make your job, you know, easier? And how, how does that make your job as so that, chief? That, that is two things. One, um, engaging my students is what I enjoy the most about this job. Okay. okay. So for me, it's, it's, it's all fun. Gotcha. I can literally be in my office all day long, miserable all day long, dealing with problem after problem, and then go into the cafeteria or into the student center and start engaging with the students building that rapport and it changes all the energy around you okay right and so i do it for multiple different reasons but uh, the, the main one is that relationships do matter mm -hmm. and it's important that the students know that i'm the person that can help you if you need uh, a particular type of help right okay and I'm, I'm also a tool that you can use to help get out of situations um that you may not want to get into so you have to be accessible to the students yeah okay. i think that's where a lot of police chiefs on university campuses go wrong when i hear chiefs tell me yeah i'm I'm sure none of my students know me by name. That's problematic because no matter where you are, your students should, you should have an identity amongst your student population. They should know that you're the person that's charged with their safety. Um, and they should know how to reach you, and you should be accessible to them um, so that, that, that you can resolve problems before they pop up. So, What are you know ways that students can stay engaged but safely on here on campus following the policies? So... You know, I always tell students, we're not here to mitigate your fun, your fun at all. We're here to mitigate um, harm to you, right? And sometimes they interact with the fun part. Okay. But um, students can stay engaged in many ways. Uh, there are so many organizations on this campus that will help students stay engaged, get engaged, um, that they really should look at getting involved in. The Student Center is full of activities, everything from SAB to SGA to all kinds of student orgs that they should get involved in. And that keeps you engaged, that keeps you connected with the, uh, the overall campus as well. And it makes your experience here much more enjoyable. So there are a lot of different ways that they can get involved. Now, even with the police department, we have an internship that's normally available to our juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another way if you want to learn more about what we do in this career field, um, that you can get involved in our internship program. Uh, t talk about your experience working in, because you're also a, an instructor also. Mm -hmm. So talk about, you know, transitioning from being a chief of police and, you know, being an instructor as well. How does that your that that part of your job uh, work? So to me, that comes much more naturally because okay. that, that was my chosen profession, right? Yes. I chose to be an educator. Uh, this is the best of both worlds for me. So I get to do my job as a police officer, but I also get to go in the classroom and educate. And so to, it's, it's the best of both worlds, the way I, the, way, the best way I can put it. Right. I love teaching. I love, I, I, even though I left the education, who 20 plus years ago but well, you have a lot of degrees yeah, yeah. so that's 20 that's plus years ago you know i still i have remained in education i've continuously taught courses at the community college uh, or at other universities uh and even online so you know my goal is to always be engaged with my student population i love teaching i love imparting the knowledge more and more or less i love learning from the students gotcha. because i stay the students always ask me how do you know all our lingo and so and so that's a learning experience for me you know what i'm saying listen i used to be hip <laughs> but the older you get, then you start to realize, I'm, I'm my mama. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they help keep me young and keep me in, in with the know with what's going on with their generation as well. And it helps me understand um, how they think. Um, why do they do this? Why do you all do these type of things, right? We engage in that way. So it helps me understand um, the job on this side a little bit better as well. Talk about how, you know, you, I said that you have uh, a lot of degrees. You have, uh, re re remind me how many degrees do you have? Let me look around the wall here. I got one, two, three, four. Four degrees. Yeah. But no doctor yet. No, no, no doctor. Do, uh, is that in the plans? Uh, it may, it may be, it may be. You know, I have six years and and I can retire, uh, essentially, right? So a doctorate for me would be a personal accomplishment, a personal goal, a personal choice. Yeah. It's not necessary for for the advancement in my career because um, I'm at the pinnacle of my career yeah. now. Uh, and I, I don't plan on leaving Central. This is mm -hmm. where I'm going to be to finish out my career. So it doesn't benefit me there, but it does as a, as a first-generation college student. Yeah. Um, the first of my family to go to college and get an associate's degree. The first of my family to go to college and get a bachelor's and then decide a few years later, you know what, I think I, think I can keep doing this and go get my master's. Um, you know, it motivates me to want to say, you know what, I think I can reach that ultimate goal and become a doctor. So it, it might be a personal goal that I, I, I decide to pursue in the next couple of years. Okay, what's next for you, Chief? You know, you've, you, you've been here since 2020, I believe, right? What, what's next for you? So what's next for me is making sure that we get through the school year, right? We still got spring semester coming up. Um, you know, we start already, we're already planning for next year's homecoming. 
<laughs> we're already planning, yeah. So, uh, and not just that, but we we're gonna be hosting A and T here next year. So that's gonna be a oh, huge game for the eight, Aggie Eagle Aggie Classic. Eagle Classic. That's gonna be how's that gonna, gonna, how's gonna, how's gonna, that's gonna happen? Our stadium is but so small. Uh -huh. we're gonna have to talk about logistics. There's a okay. lot of planning that's got to go into okay. it. But we are gonna host the Aggies here on, on campus. So that's gonna be a, a game that probably rivals yeah uh, homecoming. Uh, you know when it when it comes to attendance and so on. And so good money grab for the institution. Yeah, too. good big yeah. yeah. All right, thank you so much, Chief, for coming on the yeah, show. Absolutely. I greatly appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I, I, you're welcome back anytime. All right, my All man. All right, thank do you so it. much. What's up? What's your mic up? You're listening to What's Hot on NCCU Audio Net. It's What's Hot, What's Your Mind Cook. That was Kill Bill Sizzle here on What's Hot. I got my guest co-host, uh, Tiffany Holmes, in the building. She's, hello, hello. She's a mass comm student. She's a publicist for many people and a part of a lot of stuff here on campus. Thank you so much for being guest co-host uh, today. Thank you for having me again. Uh, no problem. It's time to get in this uh, the hot question of the day. So recently I put out a poll out on, on my Instagram as I do every week on uh, on my Instagram at Shemai Cook TV. Um, and the question this week, so recently you know Central, uh, NCCU ran out of internet. We got hacked. Our internet got hacked. Uh, so we didn't have internet for uh Almost a week. Well, no, I wouldn't say a week. It was like four days. Yeah, four days. Um, and you know, people was going bananas because they couldn't do anything with their class. Doing couldn't go into the internet. Uh, so the, I th thought of the question to bring up to my my insta uh, the Instagram followers and the listeners and the viewers. Uh, can you go w uh, a week without internet? And seventy five percent of the people said yes. And 25% of the uh, people said no. Mm. Tiffany, I want to hear your take on this first. Oh, um... Well, hmm. can, can you go a week out without internet? Can I go a week without... Yes, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Um, I come from a military household, so, oh. you know, punishment was, was, was real. You know, if you brought home a C, you had to wear a uniform... Khakis and polos, baby. So I've definitely went without internet for a week. Um, I've went without music for a couple of weeks. I've definitely been grounded before. So, yes, I've read a book, y'all. I know how to read. Yeah, reading is fundamental. Reading so, is so fundamental. Yeah, so fundamental, especially in our major. Especially, right. Yeah, especially in this ministry. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think I can't. I'm sorry. I can't do my job effectively without internet. We can't right? do our job effectively. Right. So I can't go a week without on the internet because I can't do my job. I can't get give you guys the stories that you want to hear. So uh, I yeah, I can't. But this poll, I think some of these people are lying. Yeah, y'all lying. Bad. Over this over eighty people uh, voted. So oh well. But uh, here is Chris Brown. Something too hot. It's what's hot with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I got my special guest co-host who's been with me on the show. Re really appreciate it. Tiffany Holmes in the building. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for coming on the show with me and being guest co-host today. Absolutely. You're welcome. Uh, you are welcome back anytime. Tell you everybody your information before we go, before I tell everybody my quote of the day. Tell everybody your information and all that stuff and that what you do on campus that you could talk about. Okay. Um, so I am the vice president of PRSSA. That's the Public Relations Student Society of America here um, at NCCU. Um, also um, in other organizations on campus. Um, and hmm, I think that y'all can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is, you know, it's, it's a little quiet, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's um it's just Tiffany um with three Y's and a period in between mm -hmm. each word. Uh thank you so much for coming on the show, Tiffany. I greatly appreciate it and you're welcome back anytime. And major props, you do a lot of work here at on uh, at Central and yes. you know, yeah, yeah, you're a bit very busy woman. So I am. So major props to you. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time for my quote of the day so we can get out of here. Some people are just really great manipulators. They can lie, they can cheat, they can even treat you badly and somehow make it seem like it's your fault. Mm. It's not your fault. Mm. Don't fall for it because that is just what people do. Gaslighting. Gaslighting. God bless you. It's What's Up with Michael. See you guys next week.